we're back to working on the board. So I've got a bunch of resistors left, and as you can see, I've got all my caps, and I actually took the time to mark on each one which side is, I put a little silver marker on, which side is the, um, the outer shield, outer foil. Uh, I've got a video that talks about this, I won't go into too much detail, but just as a quick reminder, most cap manufacturers nowadays don't mark the outer foil. And the reason the outer foil is important is you can tell which side with a, with a quick test that I've shown in another video, how to tell which is the outer foil and which is not. But if you send the ground of the outer foil, or it's called, I'm sorry, not ground. If you send the outer foil leg of a capacitor towards a grounding position or a lower impedance side, that means if any noise gets into the cap's outer foil, it gets fed backwards, not forwards into the circuit. So it's separated from moving on down the line and making more noise in your, in your circuit. So that works out better for you in the long run. So... At any rate, we'll go ahead now and start to, or continue to put these in. So I had kind of stopped in a couple places where I had caps that were coming in right through in here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and add those. I got a .0047. Of course, that might take me a bit to find it. So I'll try and kind of categorize these based upon those sizes. This will be... All right, I've got all of my uh, caps kind of sorted by order here. So this one, again, uh, it's going to go... According to the chart here, right Now one thing that I need to try and look at and figure out quickly though before I keep doing these, um, that, I think I got that one right on accident, but you have to look for where you can put your mark because the top cut is what cups off this one. And going out at the top cut from the schematic is um, it the, the resistors that are coming down off of that top cut on either side are uh, going through this capacitor and then heading off to a pot that kind of adjusts and drops to ground. So basically that side is going towards a grounding mechanism. If you use the top cut, it grounds some of that frequency down to ground. Uh, all right, and then as far as my other two go, um, they are the output from the phase inverter. So I really want them to have their negative or that grid side down this way towards the where the phase inverter's output is coming into the next stage. So I will... Um, I will then make sure, I think I got that one lucked out right as well, the gray will be down at this end. So let's get another one of those guys. I'm going to do two more .01s and those ones will go between these two. But let's look at those as well. Those look like they're sending output to the phase inverter from some of the, the tone pots and whatnot. So that actually means I want my silver up on that end. So we'll get that done now.
perfect. Um, before I continue, I'm going to stop recording for a minute and see because sometimes I need to check batteries. So we'll take a pause for a minute and I'll check that. All right, looks like we were good. So, resuming. And I guess, to me, a lot of this works. This is actually some of the funnest stuff. It's like little puzzle pieces and catching yourself if you do things wrong, but making sure that otherwise you're trying to do this as consistently as possible. And uh, I do like these little benders. They make it a little bit easier to, to get a consistent bend that fits the holes more correctly. All right, so those are done. Now, if you remember now, you can see I've actually gotten to the point where I had stopped on my um, resistors as well, that's how far I'd gotten before, so now I've caught up with all of my capacitors to that point, and I need to continue with the rest. Um, so the next one over looks like is a larger wattage resistor, and I hope that's my last one, but I have it in here. And uh, it looks like it's a, it starts with a 22, I know that from my chart, but without, you know, the colors can always be a bit tricky, I think that that's a, 20, is it 2.2K or 22K? We will see. I will look at my uh, thing here and we'll see. It looks like it's red, red, gold, which, or I'm sorry, red, red, orange, which is 22K. We'll double check that with my chart here. Red, orange. Orange is 1K, so we have 22 times 1K would be 22K. Exactly. Okay, cool. So that is my 22K resistor. That is going to go here, and that is also another of that same size of uh, uh, 30. I had one of the other fun parts here again is that I've got some wire already in these, so getting them to go down. It's almost impossible, so it looks like sadly yet again on this one as well, I'm going to have to wrap wire it, wire wrap it I should say, because both of these have some of my uh, parts to it, but so what we'll do is we'll try and wrap those instead. So those ones will look a little odd because they're below, but... I'm anchoring some. This is so. This is, I think, one of the things I've been shown before was to pipe these up through the bottom just to make sure they don't fall out. The, the bottom wi wired stuff, but the disadvantage then is that when I come back later, I have these wires in the top that make it hard for some of these to go in. So I probably just chose the wrong gauge wire, and that's why it's a bit thick and hard to get in. But you know, I can still wire on these resistors like I'm doing, and then once I solder them, they'll be in place. So it's just uh, it doesn't look quite as neat as the other ones, but it fulfills the job. All right, and then the top resistor up is a brown, red, yellow. So yeah, as soon as I stop, it sure enough is the like third one I check. So here we go, 12K. So this one's gonna go between there and there. Again, I don't know that I'll be able to get it even in here. This is so tight. So I'll have to possibly wound, wind the one in, but I'll get my balance still at that same, I believe it should be 30 up here. Oh no, it's gonna be 25 up there. So I'll bend it for 25. 